Good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining us today. We are here for a talk by Dr. Deji Paulos on the aesthetics of Dhani in theatre. So I guess, as the name suggests, we're going to be talking about um, theory and practice today. Um, the theory of Dhani and the practice of theatre, and I would say even dance. And uh, so in a way, we are talking of text and Obliquely, the text that we are referring to here is the Nati Shastra because the Rasa theory is, it's the Nati, it's the Nati Shastra that was, it's Bharata who proposes the Rasa theory first. And then in the ninth century, Anand Bhartana um, proposes Dhvani as a method to evoke Rasa. And Dhvani, as we know, is a suggestion. So um, he's proposing suggestion at the power of suggestion to evoke Rasa. And then in the 10th century, we know that Abhinav Bharti, Abhinav Gupta writes the Abhinav Bharti, which is, of course, he also writes the Lochana, the commentary on the Vanya Loka, but he also writes the Abhinav Bharti, which is a commentary on the, on the Nati Shastra, in which he also integrates Dhani or suggestion into um, the evocation of Rasa. And also he does something else. He also includes the 10th, uh, the 9th Rasa, the Shant Rasa, which, um, to my mind, kind of radicalizes um, the model of the, um, the Rasas. Um, and then we also see that something that emerges in Kashmir out of Kashmir Shaivism finds its home all the way down in Kerala. And uh, texts informed, inspired by the Dhvani theory begin to emerge um, and not only emerge as texts, but they also begin to get incorporated into practice. Um, and, um, and this is what Mr. Paulus will be talking about, hopefully, about how the Dhvani theory uh, influences um, the theater tradi the tra traditions like Kathakali, Kodiyatam, and more recently, uh, Mohini Atam. <clears throat> so I'm really, I'm really excited to kind of hear him talk about this whole trajectory of the Dhvani theory traveling all the way to the south. But apart from this, I also have, an, I also have another agenda. And the other agenda is, um, it's more kind of, um, it's, it's to, to talk about or to introduce about the evolution of the Rasa theory, that how the Rasa theory, which starts in the Nati Shastra, then evolves into something else um, uh, through its, marrying, so to speak, with poetics, with Indian poetics. And that's, and the reason that I, I, I want to talk about it is because I think as classical dancers, like me, um, I, when I say classical dance, I mean Bharatanatyam, Kathak, Mani, uh, Odyssey, uh, we are, our pedagogies, our trainings have been more, so to speak, Nati Shastra centric. Um, and the way we kind of venerate the Nati Shastra, we see it as a um, and I hope, hope I'm not generalizing here, but it's as a very um, generic text, which is to be venerated, to be treasured. Um, and, um, the, and we kind of see it as a monolithic text. And this attitude of, re, of seeing a text as monolithic um, and venerating it, so to speak, actually, to my mind, closes the text, so to speak. The text kind of closes when the text becomes too precious, as the Nati Shastra does become for people like us, um, it actually um, gets ossified and, and closes in on itself. And what really excites me about Mr. Paulus's work, and I'm going to just share one of his, one of the books that I read and I got to know of him. Um, uh, this is one amongst many of his publications. Um, what it excites me about his work is that he kind of talks about how this theory evolves uh, uh, very liberally gets reinterpreted and then incorporated into, um, into systems of Abhinaya, uh, which are quite uh, distinct and different from how we imagine or read Abhinaya directly out of the Nati Shastra. So without this, uh, uh, without um, taking any more time, I will invite uh, Ridupankhi to uh, give a short introduction to Mr. Paulos, and after which we will commence with the talk. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Naftej, and uh, hello, everyone. Uh, Dr. K.G. Paulos is a renowned Sanskrit scholar who 
who specializes in comparative aesthetics, the Natya Shastra, ancient theater, and Kudiyattam. He is presently the chief editor of publications at Arya Vedya Shala, Kottakal. He was a fellow of the Indian Institute of Advanced Study, Shimla, from 2012 to 2014, and was the first vice chancellor of Kerala Kalamandalam, deemed University for Art and Culture. He has held positions like Registrar of Sri Shankaracharya University, Chairman Chinmaya International Source and Sthan, and Principal of Government Sanskrit College, Tripuri Thoda. His fellows has 20 books under his authorship and has edited over 50 books and published many research papers. His edited book, Vengya Vakya, which uh, the aesthetics of Dhwani in theatre has earned much appreciation among his readers and followers of the theater world. Uh, with that, I welcome you, Dr. Paulos, and uh, thank you for joining us today. Yes, yes. Thank you, Brother Bungi. So, respected Mr. Johar, dear artists and resigas who are hearing me from far and near, warm welcome to all of you to this evening. We are, uh, I am audible, I think so. Yes, you are. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. We are discussing today on the aesthetics of Thoni in theater. Thoni in Sanskrit poetics denotes the implied sense, uh, the suggested meaning in simple words the unsaid in poetry. <laughs> and the Vrathana of the 9th century considered this the very soul of poetry. Kavyasyatma Thoni. This we can understand very well. We know it well. But how can this become the essence of theatre? That's the point we are discussing today. The work of a poet in Sanskrit comes under two categories, Drishya and Shravya. Everything that is presented visually on stage and appreciated, like dance, drama, etc., come, comes under Drishya. All those read and released come under uh, say Shravya. The India and the Indra relations of the two are complicated. At present, we do not enter into that row, that details. We will discuss our topic in two parts. First, the theory, Siddhamba, and second, the practical application the prayoga of it in theater. Theater in general comes under the category of Drishya. In India, any discussion on theater starts with the Nati Shastra of Haridamuni. This, as you know, is an encyclopedic work on theater compiled somewhere in the second century before the common era. But remember, Nadi Shastra is not a text of merely 6,000 verses, but it is a tradition. And it is a living tradition even today in our performing arts and also in our literature, literary discussions. Parada himself was a talented actor and in all probability the head of a dramatic group. He had with him the recorded aphorisms of his predecessors, the in-depth experience he gained and the rich knowledge he acquired through interaction with the contemporary conventions. The theatre should have been vibrantly active during his period. Parada's disciples 
put forth the following questions and he gave the answers everybody knows it but simply to give an introduction and taking it one how did natya originate the answer lord brahma created natya in order to instill lofty ideas in the society as a play thing kridaniya kam with the motif of uplifting the people two for whom brahma created natya answer vedic knowledge has access to a privileged few but theater is for all three what are the components of natya gesticulated spoken and facial expressions combined with the music and percussions are the five components panjanga later on dance was also added as the sixth component four on what authority does natya function answer natya is a world a world out of and functions on the authority of the vedas five how can it be performed through the modes of presentation that is the prayoga marga actually all the 36 chapters of nadi shastra are the answer for this last question now one or two concepts of bharata uh, we can go very uh, quickly pass on to two or three points for one the concept of imitation it's a familiar word for us imitation bharata reveals this concept of imitation in a symbolic way the demons revolted against the first presentation amruta madhana churning of the milky ocean in which they complained that they were represented in bad taste bharata convinced them natya is not a as is what is presentation but an idealized representation he uses the word bhava anukirtana to convey this special meaning of imitation you have two words in parada sapta dweepa anukaranam natyam there he uses the word anukarana then he modifies it to anukirtana anukarana has two levels vikarana and the other anukirtana kirtana is idealizing bhava here means imagination kalidasa has used it in that sense mat sadrishyam virahatanuva bhavagamyam likhandi you know in mehasandasha the yakshaganya was uh, drawing the picture of uh, painting uh, um, say yaksha it is 8 uh, months he has left here now she wrote his picture he painted him uh, he uh, his viraha uh, tanu the question is how can he has not seen yaksha as viraha tanu when they were uh, together he was not viraha tanu the tanu was not krishna but how can she now paint him in his viraha tanu form kalidasa gives a beautiful explanation here it is bhavagamyam she is imagining how my husband would be after 8 years of separation 8 months of separation from me this is actually what an artist does he has not seen say uh, ravana with uh, 20 hands say 20 uh, eyes the, he has not seen it 
but how does an actor imitate him present him on our stage avagamyam the actor has seen uh, a man with two eyes a man with uh, say two hands he imagines how a man with 20 hands 20 eyes will be like and he is present on uh, presenting on stage that imagined form of ravana so anukarana according to bharata is not mimicry it is the imaginative idealized representation of life this is very uh, yeah, important concept of bharata about uh, say Uh, imitation because we are familiar with uh, aristotle and the imitation etc etc we use that word very loosely but farada has used it bhava anukirtana he has used it in a special sense it has to be borne in mind that the natya dharmi mode of presentation reflects this kind of imitation which is distinct from the realistic mimicry mode so this is about uh, imitation of parada imitation in parada second point i will quickly go through the notion of rasa the most important concept in parada is his treatment of rasa the key word here is bhava it denotes two notions the emotional dna so to say latent in every being that is bhava let us call it the permanent mood the stai bhava the outward expressions of this mood is also known as bhava kavah antargadam pavam this is the emotional dna pava n expressing that also is pava basic emotions are h transient moods are 33 and the involuntary expressions are h the emotional complex this consists of 49 expressive tools the primary responsibility of the actor is to portray the emotional experience of the character through these expressive tools the actor has only his body to interact with the audience therefore he transforms the body into a language through the movement of limbs angika verbal and vajika and more importantly facial expressions satvika in addition the costume makeup etc create a conducive atmosphere the expressions singularly or as a combination are abhinaya and are the most important aspect in theater Bharata discusses the details of Abhinaya, and and now not going to the complete details of Abhinaya, but just uh, I give a hint. Bharata discusses the details of Abhinaya in three different contexts in Nadi Shastra. The first is the Bhava Dhyaya and the Sad Dhyaya, six and seven, in which. he gives instructions regarding the presentation of each of the mental states and moods that is the emotions presentation of emotions unit by unit how the eyes how the cheeks how the hands how the mudras and unit by unit then the second 
is in the 24th chapter called Samanya Abhinaya. This is the process of homogenization. Samani Karana, you will say. Samani Karana of whatever has been done earlier. Samani Karana to bring up a totality of the different units of acting, music, drama, percussion, etc., etc., etc. Then, Parada gives further details of Abhinaya in the 26th chapter called Chitra Abhinaya, special representation, the sunrise, moonrise, different seasons, etc., etc., which has which he had not uh, say, worked out, yeah, had not given earlier in the Bhavadhyaya and in the Samanya Dhyarnadhyaya. Kalidasa has beautifully illustrated Bharata's concept of acting in Malavika's dance in Malavika Dhanitra. See, Kalidasa is very close to Bharata and uh, Kalidasa strictly follows Parada. So he gives a lively picture of Malaviga's dance. Angai Angair Nihida Vajanei Sujida Samyak Artha. So the Artha is Sujida like that. The meaning is conveyed like that. Paranya so leya manyugata. Tanmayatvam Raseshu. Identity with the Rasa. Shakhayo Nihi. Mrudura Hinaya. Tad Vigalpa and Ubrutta. Pavo Pavam Nudadi. One Pava, another Pava, Pava, continuously, Paramperea. Pavo Pavam Nudadi. Vishaya. Even though there are different, different bhavas, the primary bhava is one and the same. With the limbs eloquent with the expression, she indicated the idea well. Her footsteps were in tune with the melody and the identity of emotion, where emotion well delineated. The dance as done by the movements of her hands and fingers, was gentle and subtle. The succeeding emotion, cancelled by preceding ones, while keeping the delight intact. So this is how beautifully Kalidasa presents the concept of Parada. That's very important. The succeeding emotions cancel the preceding ones while keeping the delight in them. That is the Mukhya Rasa is there. Even though there are many, many bhavas coming and coming and coming, the main principle Rasa, it was there. Now, I do not uh, give more details about Bharata. Just, just I was giving two, three points here. Now let us go to some 800 years. After 800 years comes the theory of Thuni. The word Thuni implies kind of resonance. Anandavarthana, the 9th century, elaborated this in his seminal work, Thunyaloka, the light of Thuni. Thuni, Thuni, Aloka. Aloka is light. His intention was to churn out intellectual, emotional, and imaginative elements. Intellectual, emotional, and imaginative elements of a poem that blends in a predominant sentiment, making a simultaneous appeal to awaken the reader. What he wanted was to tell the poets that the beauty of a poem lies not in what he expresses, 
but in what he conceals. The unsaid makes deep impression in the minds of the Rishikas than the ones he has clearly expressed. Let us take a common example, which all of you knows very well. In Kumara Sambhava, Kalidasa gives a detailed description of the Saptarshi's visit to the abode of Himalaya to request to give Parvati in marriage to Shiva. The sages were talking to him away. It's a wonderful picture there. Kalidasa is creating a wonderful picture of a Grahastha. Now, Himavari is the Grihastha. Mena is his wife. Satarshis has come. Satarshis, they have come. They are with Arundhati. With all preparations, they have come. Now they are discussing the details of the marriage. They are asking for the girl, Parvati. And we know that how much, what was the all the penance done by Parvati and the appearance of Brimajarin, everything, everything is in our minds. Now, what was Parvati doing? What was Parvati doing? See, only Kalidasa can tell it so beautifully. Parshwe Pituhu Atho Mukhi Nila Gamala Patrani Ganayamasa Parvati. What a wonderful visual image is presented here. The Thoni here, we cannot explain the Thoni here. In that, say, Atho Mukhi, Parshwe Viduhu, Lila Gamala Patrani, what all things came to her mind in what note? This is Thoni. And this Thoni Kalidasa created through a visual image. See, when we look, Bharati has said nothing. She is mute, telling nothing. But in that scene, the eloquent, the most eloquent thing is that the counting of the petals of the lotus. This is Thuni. Supposing that Kalidasa had something, uh, tell, uh, told something uh, different. Parvati was very bashful. She was moving here and there or sitting somewhere. It was, all those things would have been so ridiculous. So Kalidasa knew Thoni that alone is the best thing. Don't tell, conceal her emotions and the reader will understand what she wants to tell. That's all. So you never, uh, when we Go to the classes, we will say here the Lajja of Parvati. That is the Vijayari Bhava. That Lajja, Lajja came out of the Redi to Shiva. All that, all that. But you know, let us not discuss those things here. Parvati simply Lila Kambalavatrani Yanayamasa Parvati. What a wonderful visual image. This is the aesthetic rapture we get from poetry according to Anandavarta. <clears throat> now, uh, see, see, Anandavarta came from Kashmir, Abhinav Gupta came from Kashmir. A contemporary of the, a contemporary of both Apinava and uh, say Anadavartana is uh, Kulashekara. He is from Kerala. This Kulashekara, he was an actor, he was a dramatist, and uh, say he was a uh, protector and promoter of all the art forms. He heard of the Thuni theory, this theory of Anandavartana. See, in those uh, days, Kashmir and Kerala had close connections. You may be perhaps remembering 
that it was uh, the, during that period our shankaracharya walked from kerala to kashmir he went to kashmir by walk so we had a very close ties immediately this theory came at uh, theory was propounded uh, propounded at uh, mean kashmir see the kashmiri pandits at that time was uh, dead against this theory but this kulashekhara in the distant tip of this peninsula kerala supported this theory and he wanted to apply this principle to theater and paved the way for the survival of natya shastras prayoga marga arada did not envisage in his uh, uh, writings about a suggested sense presenting a suggested sense he says vajaga is there vajaga is there everything is there but a suggested sense is beyond his discussion the royal dramatist kulashekhara realized the potential of the suggestion in theater and revolutionized the performance tradition of sanskrit dramas and you know the kudiyattam in kerala that is the sanskrit uh, uh, that is performance of sanskrit theater in kerala that is what we see in kudiyattam kathagalli mohiniyattam etc etc he revolutionized the sanskrit theater here performance of traditional sanskrit dramas his problem was this he inquired as to how people are prompted to come and watch the drama when they already know the story and even the sequence of presentations so remember his first drama uh, he wrote two dramas one was subhadra hanjia so he asked all those coming to see this drama no very well that subhadra will marry arjuna and their love will be realized everything they know it then why should they come to the theater he said uh, he as his ascertainment was that they were keen to know the how part of the presentation not at the what part what is going to happen they were not anxious about it but they were anxious how this particular actor presents this situation on stage so it is a how and not the what that is important in theater while i addressing the issue anandavarthana came to kulashekhara's aid and the latter found through the formist theories that there was immense scope for the actor if the actor was able to portray the silence hidden by great dramatists in their texts you see our dramatists you know they do not reveal everything our great vyasa he has not told us everything he has hidden so many so many things in his idhiga in the idhigasas it is the responsibility of the reader responsibility of the poet and responsibility of the actor to reveal the hidden ideas of yasa or idhigasas or great things that is in you know, uh, if the actor was able to portray the silence hidden by great dramatists in their text presenting the plain explicit is not a big deal anybody can do that but bringing out bringing out the implicit 
is great. He made three important contributions. Three important contributions. One, freedom to the actor for Manotharma Abhinaya. Manotharma Abhinaya means say, imaginative acting. In the normal case, an actor has strictly follow the Odes text. He cannot go beyond it. Now, our Kulishagara said, do whatever you want. This is Manodharma. You, in this particular context, you act whatever you want to promote this particular emotion or particular context. Don't confine to the text of the order. You see in Kudiyata, one text of Kudiyata, for several examples, Ashtari Judamani. It's a very important text, you know. The drama in six uh, angas, uh, in seven angas, sorry, seven angas, you know. This was presented in Kerala in Kudiyatam style, taking 108 nights. How is it to take 108 nights? The first uh, where is the Lakshmana, Rama and uh, Sita, they have come to the forest. Lakshmana is going to uh, build an ashrama for them to be there. So the first sloga is regarding construction of uh, an ashrama for Sita and Rama. This sloga, Lakshmana completes with a night, within a night. The first day, this is the only thing this uh, sl uh, one sloga is the only thing. Now the actor can build, it, build this hermitage. You know, he can take two hours, three hours, four hours. Mano Dharma. That is, uh, it is here that creative genius of the actor comes out. So, Purushakara said, don't follow the, the order. You take suggestions from the order and you know, you go on with your own way of doing it. Second, Pagarnatam. Pagarnatam means say transformation of roles. That is, you know, <clears throat> Kuryatam is an actor's theater. It is not uh, the director's or anybody's theater. The actor has the full freedom here. He is the liberator from the text, etc. So he will go on narrating this of his own solo performance. Mostly in Kudiyatam, we get solo performance. Supposing, uh, say, Arjuna is going for uh, his Tirtha Yatra. On the way, he met, meets so and so many, so many people. Say, he meets uh, Ulubi on the way. Then uh, Ulubi asks him, Who are you? Now, Arjuna has to tell her, I am Arjuna. But here, you know, there is only one person. So, Arjuna has to transform himself to Ulubi to answer these questions. So, the actor come on stage in, uh, say, the role of the imitated character, Arjuna. He can very well be a neutral, uh, very well be in a state of neutrality. From there, he can transfer to Ulubi. Come back again to the neutrality. Then go to, say, Arjuna. Then go to Pandebutri. Go to this, go to there, going, coming. So, coming, say, the uh, character, uh, the actor on stage, he is in the neutral position as the actor, so and so, then transforms to many, many, many. See, this is what we see in Kuryata. This is the wonder of uh, Kathagali. And you know, our dance, in the dance performance, this is the essence, this is the gist of Parunata. But you know, our Parada cannot uh, admit this. Parada says, you know, if you want to talk to Ulubi, bring 
a female character there rest in ulubis there then you talk you cannot transform yourself to ulubi or ulubi can transform himself to be so every character in a theater need to be presented in his or her costume costume so this neutrality and transformation from character to character this is a wonderful mette introduced by kulasekara and you know see the kuriyattam and kathagal follows this they can expand to any extent through this mette see westerners you know many of them come to kerala to appreciate and to see kathagali and kuriyattam and all that most of them after seeing these performances are wonder struck how the actor gets the freedom in your theater to transfer to whatever he wants that is the freedom of the actor <clears throat> and the third the first was manodharma abhinaya the first was the manodharma abhinaya the second is the transformation of roles and the third to introduce implied sense in performance we can reveal the concealed implied hidden sense these three are the innovations made by uh, sekula sekara in uh, uh, in his new ski his innovations are recorded in vingi vekya there was a text you saw her uh, as a jo her uh, very kindly he exhibited that day vingi vekya i was very much the sent to see that that we gave here all right perhaps the first stage script for a play by the author himself now we have started from bharata then we came to uh, say anandavardhana and the anandavardhana's theory was applied to theater by our kulashekara by this time the gap between drishya and shrivya has narrowed down and it's very interestingly uh, say abhinav gupta wrote commentaries for both anandavardhana and bharata because one is drishya and the other is shrivya so it is a very symbolic that abhinav gupta wrote uh, commentaries for both so uh the gap between drishya and shrivya has narrowed down to a great extent thoni and rasa became the tools for relish of both it is interesting to know that patta tauda the guru of even abhinav gupta strongly believed that rasa swada is possible only in the drishya kavya that is what the vela he says there only the resiga can visualize the vipavas before our eyes prayogatvam ane avanne kavye na aswada sambhava prayogatvam ane avanne kavye what is not presented on stage there is no rasaswada that was our uh, abhinavas guru he said but abhinava tried to bring in a compromise it's a wonderful compromise a compromise according to him kavye bi the guru said that in kavya there is no rasaswada but abhinava says kavye bi not tyayamane yevarasa in kavya if you can visualize things we can enjoy this the existence kavye bi is very important kavye bi 
Yes, I can be realized in Shrevia, in Kavya. If only it creates mental images as if they are seen before I, our eyes. You see, when Parvati uh, is uh, counting the petals, we see her before our eyes. That's it. Parvati, we see her before our eyes. We see even her facial expressions, her bashfulness, and her look downwards, everything we see as portrayed in our minds. So, Abhinavta says, there is a process of bringing the situation as seen as though before our eyes. Pratyaksha, don't uh, find fault with me for using the Sanskrit words, but this is Abhinavgupta's words. I want to tell you that words you know. Pratyaksha sachalkara kalpa prikriya tavadu bhajayate. When you see, when you read Kumara Sampava, when you see this uh, in this context, when Parvati is counting it, you get the impression. Pratyaksha sachalkara kalpa prakriya tavat ubajayate. You can release the sa. If only you can see in your mental eye Parvati counting the lotus petals. So what we uh, are discussing here is, see, first we had the sa in Parada, then we had the Thuni in Abhinavgupta, I was sorry, both in Abhinavgupta and Abhinavgupta. Then uh, this Duni came to poetry, uh, Duni came to theater. Now there is a synthesis. Poetry, drama, Thoni, Resa. All this together makes a synthesis. This synthesis, which we get by uh, 9th, 10th centuries in our aesthetics, is a wonderful thing which we can relish. The point here is this. Mere retelling something is of no use in the contemporary way. What we are doing? Say there are Puranas, there are Ridhikasas, there are so many, so many stories. We retell it. Say we say Shakespeare retold, Kalidasa retold. There is no meaning. It is for children. Leave it to children. When you come to theater, mere retelling something is of no use in the contemporary world. Any director, actor, or dancer should aim at creating visually a mental image in the eyes of the Aswadaka. When we choreograph new dance items, when we create new uh, theater forms, remember we are creating a visual image. And only there we can see the Rasa, the Tuni, everything, everything, and the best of everything. That's it. I'm taking time, leh, more time, eh? Is it? Uh, <coughs> of course, I will. Dear friends, till now we were discussing the theoretical foundation and the evolution of the concept of Thuni in Indian theater over a period of thousand years. We started from Parada Siresa, passed over to Andavarthana's Thuni in poetry, and at the end came to the concept of Thuni in theater in Vijayakya. Now, let us come to the practicals as to how Thuni works 
own stage. The suggested sense can be uh, in three ways. It can be an idea. You can suggest an idea through the presentation. It can be a metaphor. It can be an emotion. An idea, a metaphor, an emotion. Let us see how the theater can strongly imply a new idea. Here I am taking examples from the contemporary period. Observe. The Neela Darpan by Dina Benthumitra in 1860 is considered to be the first national drama of India. It's 1860 Bengal. It presents the pitiable conditions of the indigo workers and farmers during the colonial days. There is a scene in it wherein a white man assaults the wife of an Indian laborer. Unable to bear it, an Indian, remember, a black, attacks the white man. Shocked, the European spectators rose from their seats. Vinodini Desai, the actress in the play on stage, in her autobiography has narrated the events that followed. Immediately, there was a hue and cry from among the Sahib spectators. They all rose from their seats and the people behind them rushed up to gather before the footlights. It was quite a sight. Some of the red-faced Goras unsheathed their swords and jumped on the stage. The rope was pulled down immediately. We trembled. We means the actors on stage. We trembled and cried out. It need not be said here that the play was banned. Not only that, the government promulgated in 1876 an act enabling the government to censor every dramatic performance. Remember, strangely, that colonial act still remains and works in our law books. The Sahibs here could sense what the performances performance intended to convey to the masses without explicitly expressing it. What uh, the author has presented there was the, the say, pitiable conditions of the agrarians, the labor, the laborers, etc. When they saw it, the Sahibs understood that this is against the colonial masters, against the foreign goods. This is how an idea that is conceived, an idea strengthens theater. Another example from the colonial period will make this idea more clear. This is with regard to the presenting, with regard to presenting a mythical story from Mahaparada. Neela Darpana contained a social theme. This is with regard to Kadilkar's Kijaka Vatha in Maharashtra in 1907. The story of Kijaka Vatha, it is known to everybody. Pandavas were staying disguised in Virada Rajya. Kijaga was the chief of army there. He was fascinated by the charm of Draupadi and make, makes advances towards her. Cunningly, she fixes a place for secretly meeting 
teacher in the meanwhile she passes the information to her husband the mighty bhima he crushes the all powerful uh, say kijaga uh, to pieces this is the story on the face of it there is nothing explicitly wrong in the play yet everyone understood it is uh, those uh, colonial masters who were on the stage you know everyone understood that kichaga was lord kalsan the viceroy the viceroy and draupadi the land of india viceroy the less this outrage to mother india india but you know the story did not say anything of these things or that is none of them uttered a single word about mother india or anything like that about viceroy of that the englishmen who saw the play were terrified all their life they will not forget the scowling faces of the men when they watch kejaga's outrageous acts their admiration of bhima's passionate protest and the deep hum of satisfaction which approves the slaughter of the tyrants needless to say that the play was banned both in neeladarpan and in kijagavatha the strength of the performance is not in what is explicitly stated but in what is hidden let us take a contemporary performance to prove the point you know that kavala narayana panikya has brought to stage almost all the classical sanskrit plays on contemporary stage all with the dynamic new interpretations um, <coughs> unfortunately he is no more he is not with us today his latest uh, presentation of shagundala completely leaves out the incidents of the 6th and 7th acts instead the repudiated shagundala is brought to the king and he readily accepts her what is important here is that the director has a point to make to justify the modifications it is that he presents the play but this is the kavalam suits the directors suits he presents the play to the people of a democratic state and that he cannot do it otherwise he cannot repudiate and justify that the mother will come from heaven and absaras will come from heaven and take her he cannot justify because this is india now is a democratic country i am presenting this story to a democratic audience classical sanskrit dramas have got a great life in our time in contemporary life they are presented in various stages in different parts of the world none of these new productions are retellings of the old ones in some other productions of shagundala there is another production of shagundala which i saw recently there shagundala does not follow dushanta to the capital shagundala they were the chariot is ready and uh, see sarvadamara uh, went into the chariot so everything is ready and dushanta has in the chariot and dushanta calls shagundala to come shagundala says no my responsibility is over i have to give you a rajakumara 
to sustain your one shell. I have done it. Now, I have no place in your palace. Shangala goes back. See, perhaps Kalyasa had uh, Kalyasa seen this in, he might have, uh, we do not know what he would say. But this author says, Shagundala, the 21st century woman, will not say agree to Shagundala going back with the king who repudiated him, repudiated her for want of a ring and Afiknana, his love to Shagundala. He wants a testimony, testimonial for it, Abhijnana for it. So the other says, I cannot send Shamindala back to the capital along with the king. Every piece of art can have many, many interpretations. Ananda Pathas, Thoni Parambara for every generation. We call it Ananda Thoni Pathas or Thoni Parambara for new generations. Not only drama, but dance also follows the same path. The dance also has Dhoni Pathas. I'll give you a simple example. We, uh, we know the story of the Kubja in Bhagavada, the hunchback Kubja in Bhagavada is famous. A dance choreography on this mythical character by Dr. Kanekar is interesting. Kubja is the slave, everybody knows it, uh, slave of Kamsa, engaged to prepare sandal paste to the court. She was an object of ridicule to everybody. One day, Lord Krishna with the Balarama came on her way. He asked for a little bit of chandana paste, sandal paste. She applied the leg on his forehead. Out of compassion, Lord Krishna cured her of the deformity. This is a story in, uh, in Bhagavata, everybody knows it. Deformity. We have many kubjas in our midst. What uh, the, the director of this new choreography tells us is that the kubja represents the women of India. We have many kubjas in our midst. The hump on her back is caused by millennia of oppression, carrying the burden of heavy injustice. Men who are kind, who are kind with a sense of understanding, like Krishna, that's it. Krishna understood her and he relieved her of her problem. Such men who are kind with a sense of understanding can relieve her of the bondage. Such interpretations to mythical characters make the presentations relevant to contemporary life. What I am trying to tell you is that this is not uh, only for uh, theater, but for dance also. Instead of uh, repeating the story the same way, instead of retelling the story in the same way, if we are able to give some say, kind of interpretations, which is relevant to the contemporary life. This much about the first type of Thuni implying an idea. How an idea, Thuni, an interpretation, is possible in theater and in drama, in dance. Now, the second is uh, a metaphor. Uh, so you see the metaphor uh, in that Vingi Vyakya in its cover page. 
that is a metaphor you know in malaga agnimitra the pushpa samaya samagada vasanta kalaha samagada the story begins say when it was very hot and all the flowers from the trees had gone down but uh, once malavika put her feet in blossoms kusumida ashoka kusumida ashoka it is the picture uh, we, you see behind it so from this metaphor the entire story is developed by kavalam this story another uh, a simple example in, in shagundala the b the presence of b premara can be cited as an example the b is the king himself say the kamugatwa that is the b going to one flower one one flower from other from other from other going 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 it's the king himself it's a, a metaphor but you know there are so many meanings the third type of thuni i am concluding it because i have already taken the time more than i was expected to the third type of thuni is that of rasa you know it is so common that any part of chaundala or for that matter any singara kavya for example can be illustrated for rasa thuni so the idea i gave four examples three from theater and one from dance and uh, metaphor i gave only just this uh, primary example and for rasa we have so many examples of rasa thuni to sum up you know take much more of your time to sum up appreciation of natya in bharata was very simple it was more or less an emotional experience this as well an emotional experience things changed as time went on today it is an intellectual exercise also that helps one to solve the puzzles of contemporary life so what is the contribution of thuni to theater the contribution of thuni is that it has made this emotional thing keeping up the emotion of course that is the first and foremost the emotional thing but you know it puts problems to you problems of different type and it makes it contemporary so no more a theater is a merely emotional thing a dance is no more an emotional thing but it is also an intellectual discourse things change as time went on today it is an intellectual exercise also that helps one to solve the puzzles of contemporary life theater should stimulate our intellectual pursuits ananda thuni parampara again i am taking that word thuni parampara make things new as trees in the spring season this is what ananda vatana says when you are thuni sarve navayavadi madhuma asaiva druma the um, the trees Uh, that they had no uh, say flowers earlier when vasanta came it flowers it becomes new theater everywhere in the world is imitating is uh, the catch word in theater is imitation because uh, we are repeating that word uh, which uh, aristotle gave us theater everywhere in the world is imitating but indian theater we cannot end its focus is on 
imagination. That's it. What distinguishes the Western theater from Indian theater is that Indian theater is not merely imitative, but it is imaginative. This is a secret of the relevance of Tony in theater. Tony is imaginative, and it gives life to our theater. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so very much. This was very inspiring, very enriching. I really feel enriched. Um, from what you have shared with us. And Can I present it in a command? <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Um, I was just saying that I feel so enriched and inspired uh, by what you have said and said so simply, said so simply in such a clear manner. Um, so I just want to say thank you. Thank you. And I'm, I'm so glad that I came upon your book, read about it, and then found you, traced you, called you. And um, so we've never met before. I just read the book and I Googled him and I found him. So I'm so very glad. Um, we, uh, I know we have some people here who are very interested in what you have just spoken about. And uh, if we have any questions, uh, would somebody want to ask questions, please? Do we have some time? There are some serious practitioners, I see. Okay. Ah. Anybody has a question? No? Um, there was one, uh, uh, Ritu, was there a question in the chat? Uh, can Plato and Postcolonial Mimesis proposed by Baba be evoked in this context. Um, who is this from? Omar, are you there? Omar? I guess he's not here. I think he left. I think oh, Omar left. left. Okay, okay. Does anybody have yeah. a, else have any questions, please? Uh, can I ask? Amita, yes. Quick question. Sorry, go for Yeah, Amita, go ahead. Uh, yeah, sir, uh, in term, thank you so much for a very wonderful lecture. I really enjoyed it. And so my question is, in uh, with respect to the Dvanya Loka, Anandavardhana gives us different classifications, right? So uh, he gives a classification called Shabda Shakti Muda Dvani, where you can commit on, uh, like, categorize it for the Shravya Kavya. So is there any counterpart for uh, Shabda Shakti Muladvani in uh, Drishya Kavyas as such? Or uh, like, for example, that he quotes this uh, Mahakala example, where uh, the Mahakala becomes a season as well as that of Lord Shiva. Shiva. So uh, is there any exa uh, like example for Drishya Kavya with, as a counterpart for that? It's interesting, you know, I'll give you an example. In uh, <clears throat> See, in our Vengi uh, Vekya, it starts, uh, you know, not Vengi Vekya, the Subhadra Hanajya starts like that, you know. The Vidushaka comes and uh, he feels, uh, you know, he pretends to be very hungry and all that. Then he says, Bhagavandaha Maharsheha Hucham Datta. Datta. This is his first two words. Now, the meaning is clear. So everywhere, everybody knows that I am very hungry. Give me something to eat. But now, what uh, the author says is that he has come to uh, say the ashrama there, and uh, with Arjuna he has come there. So the word picture is feminine gender, and by picture. He means a Kanya Picha. And the Kanya Picha, it is Subhadra. We have come in search of Subhadra to get Subhadra. That is, the word Picha means Subhadra. 
Now, what is the problem here? The problem is that, you know, uh, Krishna uh, likes to give Suhadra to Arjuna. But, uh, you know, Balabhadra wants to give her to, uh, say, Duryodhana. He is the elder brother and he wants to give her. It is, at, it is in this junction that uh, uh, the Vidushaka and Arjuna comes here. He asked Pritsham Datta. The simple meaning is, give me something, I am hungry. But what he means is, Pritsha means a Kanya, through the feminine gender in it. So this is the Shabda Shikti Malakini. Example is there. Okay. I guess there was one more question. Um, uh, I heard of, um, there was somebody else. Uh, Pratyush, did you want to ask a question? There was somebody I heard. Is there any other? Can you hear me? Yeah, who's this? Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, go ahead, please. I just had a more generic question about uh, the unsaid, that is Dhani, where is it the, is it the intent of the, the writer, the actor that is more important, more focused, or is it how the Rasika receives it, the receives the unsaid meaning? Because sometimes it might, the whole thing of intended versus unintended meaning. And where is the emphasis on the funny theory? Um, see, uh, this is an interesting question because earlier we believed that you know a presentation, a theater, a presentation should be faithful to the author. So what Kalidasa intended should be presented as such here. At that time, we did not have a director in theater. We had only a Sutra Thara. Sutra Thara is only a coordinator. He arranges everything. He is not a director. But now, in theater, we have a director. And the theater is now the work of the director and not of the author. That's the important thing. I'll give you a very interesting example. See, we did not get any of the works of Pasa till uh, uh, say the first half of last century. For thousands of years, uh, hundreds of years, we did not get anything of Pasa. But you know, the actors here in Korea, the actors here, they were presenting it every day, every day. But nobody knew that this is of Pasa. Nobody knew that this is so fasa. Only when uh, we got uh, in a codex this place, along with Sopanavasa of the Ta, then we understood that Sopanavasa of the Ta is, of course, so parada of fasa. So others also should be like that. What I am telling is that in the present circumstances, in the present context, in theatre, the author is not so much important as he was earlier. Because the theater now, the production now, is of the director. I'll give you another uh, the explanation. Say, for Karnapara. Karnapara was, uh, I have seen at least uh, some 20 to 25 productions by different directors of Karnapara. The Vasa is the same order, but all the 25 I have seen are different productions. So what we ask now is, who wrote Karnapara? No, that is not the question. Who directed it? Oh, this is Kavala. This is somebody else. This is somebody else. So the present position is 
it's, it's not a great thing to be uh, say faithful to the other or to the text once uh, it is written and one once it is given to us it has become a public property all of course uh, for 50 or 60 years there will be copyright that's all nothing more than that so the other once you know he has shoot the arrow he has no say authority on it it's a contemporary life contemporary theater proves that every production is the work of a director and the director will interpret the work according to his taste according to circumstances according to the need of the society that's the production here so tony has given him that license that's important tony tells him you give whatever interpretations you can give it whatever interpretations the hunchback the lamp on her uh, body you say that it is um, so the accumulated sin of the males okay we can tell it how can other say that it is not like that that freedom that is the most important in indian theater now but we, we did not have it earlier when the sutradharas managed things because i i told you earlier sutradhara uh, the responsibility of the sutradhara is to arrange everything to coordinate the sutram dharadiri sutradhara to coordinate everything but now it is the director who interprets the drama who interprets the performance and he presents what he has in mind otherwise what happens is that you know he say or bhasas plays kalidasas plays sudhagas plays we can pre- present it only once after presenting it once we cannot go for a next performance that's it now there are innumerable productions of bhasa bhasa has given us the threat we are taking it but we are presenting it to suit the taste of the contemporary generation that's all every generation you have their own taste that's all okay thank you sir thank you very much and uh, yeah i would also kind of maybe uh, just to end i would also kind of say that maybe it also extends because i'm a soloist it also extends from the director to the actor and um yeah. like the, the manodharma as as a solo dancer or as a, yeah. as a solo kutiyat dancer um so this this freedom that is so beautiful and you've said it so clearly that it actually it, the license comes from dhvani and not the natyashastra uh, and not in natyashastra right so um, this is this is yeah. very important this just this information this, is so important and uh, this is you uh, know uh, the innovative uh, or uh, improvisation so to say yeah from because you know after we cannot uh, the theater cannot stand still for uh, 20 years 20000 years yeah, absolutely uh, not 2000 years yeah by right, 2000 years you know there is change and yeah. it will change so this is because of this the my first sentence was that natya shastra is not a text of 6000 verses it is a tradition and for this for what we interpret here we have the sanction from bharata yeah because bharata is a tradition and nadi shastra is a tradition we are revisiting bharata that's all every revisit will have new new yeah. and new ideas yeah. that's all that's enriching all. it yeah enriching it yeah so thank you very much it has thank been you. absolutely thank wonderful you. to hear you to meet you and yeah. i hope this will continue um, i'm sure my students would um, want to have you back maybe um, in a more detailed manner on the uh, on your on your writing okay. so thank you very much and thank you for so readily agreeing
because you you had no idea who I was. I just called and you had to leave it. So thank you. So all the best. I also enjoyed it very much. You know. Yeah. I I really enjoyed the, the presentation here. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Namaskar. Okay. No